Hello and welcome to another video from me, Mr. Cobolman at FS Pro. Today I'm reprising one of my uh, initial videos, which was the uh, Majestic Dash 8 Q400 sample flight. And this has been brought around for a couple of reasons. Firstly, my initial series of three videos had the final video removed because the music that plays in the background with the Dash 8 Q400 when you're loading passengers is copyrighted and YouTube had pulled the video because the music that was playing they thought violated copyright held by somebody else. Now it probably does but I'm sure that it's part of the Q400 and it's paid for and so on and so forth. But rather than go through the routine of trying to I guess uh, argue against the the copyright or whatever it was simplest for me just to take the video down so that was the first reason why I needed to remake it secondly though if you've been watching the news this week in flight sim world Majestic have released the pro version of the Dash 8 Q400 so it builds upon an already excellent sim and adds in some extra capability by way of being able to set up failures uh, shared uh, cockpit or connected flight deck whichever you prefer actuatable fuses and so on and so forth I'm not going to talk about the shared cockpit or any of those features here flight sim 481 and I may do that on our twin channel over at gear down three greens for today all I'm going to do is to go through the sample flight now if you've ever tried the sample flight provided by Majestic you may have come across a couple of gotchas I certainly did so if you want to know how to get through those stay tuned as we used to say in the olden times as my kids like to refer to it um, as I address those issues and how I've managed to get around them for this flight so you find me here on the ground ready to go I've loaded up the tutorial flight that's provided by Majestic for this product and our first thing that we need to do hereafter is to use the control panel to set up the fuel and passengers so let's bring that up over to the weight and balance page so on here I've set in 600 pounds for the forward baggage section 200 pounds for the aft baggage section 16 passengers in the Oscar Bravo section of the aircraft and 14 in the Oscar Delta section of the aircraft. This does all its magic stuff over here. Uh, we've got full fuel on today and for trip fuel we're calculating that we'll be using 2,800 pounds. So once I press the calculate button it will check our weight and balance and we can see here everything is well inside our flight envelope. Good stuff. Next thing we need to do is to send this data to the flight sim by clicking that button. Once it does that, it puts our Dash 8 into pause so we can close the control panel. We are ready to go. So, let's take pause off again. Over to the captain side PFD. The first thing I'll do is to get rid of the yoke so that we can see what's going on. And I'm going to go in a bit closer down here on the PFD to, again to make it easier to see what I'm doing. I'm going to set in the the V speeds. So over here for the speed bug for V1, I'm going to set 124 knots. Oops, that's the same for V rotate. I think it's got a fiddle factor here that when you get to a certain point, you're getting close to the number you want to enter. It automatically throws you over by a couple of points because I seem to do that consistently. Uh, next up I want to enter V fry and the value for that is 137 knots. Oh, didn't quite make it. And finally V climb which is 148 knots. Come on, I can nail this one. Get in. Okay, over to the first officer's side because although the V1 V rotate and V2 speeds are entered, we have to enter in the V fry and the V climb in addition to those ones already set here. Same process, hit the select button. 137 for V fry 
and 148 for the climb. Good, okay, back to the captain's seat. And to the overhead now, we want to set all of the batteries on in the DC panel, which they are. We want the main bus tie on, external power on, air conditioning bleed 1 and 2 to on, the recirc to on. And down on the pedestal now, we want to set the parking brake on. Power levers to disc. I'm using my throttle, uh, Cytec throttle system, so I'm just going to cycle that until I've got it down into the disc setting. Condition levers to off, which I have to do manually. There we go. And open the doors to the aircraft with Shift E. With that done, I'm going to set the arc do on. Uh, now the arc do down here, the instructions simply tell you to turn it on, but what I've discovered is if you do that, in a later phase of the flight, trying to tune the ILS for your approach doesn't work. So don't just turn it on, but switch all the way across to FMS. I'm going to do this on both ArcDoos as well. And hopefully I've configured the INI file for the aircraft correctly so that it doesn't start to play any of the music for when the passengers are loading. And I won't incur the wrath of YouTube and their copyright people. OK, everything seems to be going OK so far. Uh, flight deck announcements, of course, are fine. I'm just going to bring up the FMS, which is now going through its uh, startup self-checks, or power on self-test. Once it's complete, there we are, we will accept. I need to do the same on the first officer's side. OK, back to this one here and select the flight plan page. So our start airport is Charlie Yankee Zulu Delta. Charlie Yankee Zulu Delta. Confirm that. That's good. Our first waypoint is Oscar Oscar. Next up is Taleb. That's good. And select the list for our next entry and airway. And we want to select Q921, so that's number two. And we're going to take that all the way to Verti, which is number five on the list. So let's put everything in, all the waypoints between those two points. Next waypoint is Habs Hotel Alpha. Bravo, Bravo, Sierra. And finally our destination airport, which is Chanky, Chanky, Charlie, Uniform. Oh, good grief. Charlie, Yankee, Uniform, Lever. Marvellous. And with that entered, let's select menu. And for here, I want to select arrive. I can enter in all the details of the stars and the arrival. So we're going to be landing at runway 06 left, which is that one there. So entry number one. The star is Habs 3, which is number two. And the transition as such is runway 06 left, which is four. And for the approach, it's, well, there is only one option, so that's going to be number one. Okay, so that's all good. And with that entered, let's enter that into the flight plan. That's all good. So just checking the flight plan now. And this no link, which is between the flight plan and our approach is, is quite normal. But um, we're going to remove it now. We should really remove it in flight because, of course, any part of the star and approach could change. But for our sample flight, it doesn't, so we can remove it now. So if you select it and hit delete and delete again. So that's that gone. 
Next, I want to... Um, oh, hello. There we go. Uh, next, I want to set in an altitude constraint here at HABS. Now, if I don't, there's an instruction later on for setting in V-NAV uh, inside the aircraft for our descent. And without an altitude constraint set in here for HABS, it simply won't work. So that's the second of the gotchas that I found in the sample flight. So for here, just select the LSK, one right and enter in 9000 which is the altitude that we want to be at at Habs and enter has a little thing puts it in and the commercial at sign here meaning that we want to be at Habs at 9000 feet so that's good stuff select the nav page and we're verifying here that uh, our start position is correct which it is and our first waypoint and that's also correct good stuff let's close the doors